This is the Star News Brief. I'm Joely Regi. All healthcare workers in Kenya can expect to receive a COVID-19 vaccine early next year. Gavi says it has now secured funds to buy vaccines for nearly 20% of the country's population. Health workers, the elderly and those in poor health will be the first to be vaccinated. Experts agree several vaccine candidates could be approved next month or early January. The Geneva-based alliance says it has raised more than 200 billion shillings to guarantee at least 1 billion doses of vaccines for 92 developing countries, including Kenya. The announcement is a major relief for Kenya, which has lost at least 30 healthcare workers to the disease, the Ministry of Health has said. COVAX AMC is a global initiative led by Gavi, WHO and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations to ensure COVID-19 vaccines are available to low-income countries. Get a copy of The Star by subscribing to our e-paper for only 10 shillings by dialing star 550 star 3 hash. BBI critics have issued ultimatums to President Uhuru Kenyatta and ODM leader Raila Odinga to open the report or they shoot down the report. Representatives of pastoralist communities, Catholic Church, senators, women leaders, county assemblies forum and governors want further changes to the proposed constitutional amendments. The changes include the proposed Judiciary Ombudsman, election of women senators, creation of a Kenya Police Council, and parties selecting IEBC commissioners. The Catholic Church, echoing these concerns, pointed out the expanded executive, increase in the number of MPs, the institution of IEBC, and the place of PWDs. With the indications by Raila that the report may not be opened for major amendments, the efforts by the lot may come to naught, hence positioned for the no side of the BBI divide. Deputy President William Ruto on Monday warned that the country is headed for a lose-lose outcome unless the promoters slacken their hardline position. Why did you end up with a very controversial document with so many gaps after a whole two years of working on it? It means there was something that did not add up. So there is an opportunity for us to improve on the presentation and on the recommendations so that we can end up with a win-win outcome instead of a lose-lose outcome. Kenya is eyeing multi-billion investments from China for the country's special economic zones as the country prepares to host the Kenya International Industrial Expo. Through Kenya Investment Authority, the government is marketing at least nine SEZs in Mombasa, Naivasha and Machakos with about 9,000 acres designated for investments. The government is leveraging on the SEZs as part of its plans to boost foreign direct investments in post-COVID-19 economic recovery. Ken Invest Managing Director Moses Ikiara told the Star that the government has also set up 75 EPZs across the country, adding that these come with a lot of incentives for investors. The incentives include electricity tariffs of as low as 5 shillings per kilowatt hour, which is lower than the traditional charges of between 10 shillings and 15 shillings per unit of electricity, which has been blamed for making Kenya uncompetitive. Three NASA affiliate parties have themselves to blame for missing out from government funding only enjoyed by ODM and Jubilee, Registrar of Political Parties and Deritu has said. The Registrar on Monday told MPs that the NASA coalition agreement provided for sharing of the party's fund, but a small schedule on sharing formula, which was not completed, has blocked three parties from benefiting. These are ANC, WIPA and Ford Kenya. Neritu said her office has severally communicated to the three NASA affiliates to complete the process, but no response has been forthcoming. The three NASA parties have been on ODM's neck, demanding a share of the money allocated from the political party's fund. At some point, they even threatened to keep monthly subscriptions from their MPs. Nairobi Metropolitan Service has stopped new allocations of picking up and drop-off points for Matatus in the Central Business District. NMS boss Major General Mohamed Badi announced that such allocations would pass through Director of Roads Engineer Michael Ocheng for approval. 
Badi explained that there had been illegal allocations of the base by unauthorized officers that also triggered their decision to stop allocations. Going forward, requests for such allocation will undergo scrutiny from the NMS-appointed committee to undertake this function. This came as NMS unveiled two new bus termini that will host Matatus at Bunyala and Uhuru Park when the ban on PSVs becomes effective. The national government is planning to devolve more functions to counties if recommendations contained in the BBI report are adopted. The Ministry of Devolution and the Office of the President in consultation with the Council of Governors is expected to revisit the fourth schedule of the Constitution and agree on the functions to be unbundled to the county units. The star has established that some of the functions being lined up to be unbundled to the 47 county units include construction of school infrastructure, aspects of security, disaster management, promotion of sports and sports education, and consumer protection. On education, counties are currently only mandated to deal with early childhood education building of nursery schools and hiring of teachers, but in the new proposals, the Ward Development Fund will be used to build schools. Get a copy of The Star by subscribing to our e-paper for only 10 shillings by dialing star 550 star 3 hash. You can also get more on The Star website.